At the age of 20 in 1975, I started backpacking around the world hitchhiking. And I was very lucky to have the health and the wherewithal to continue seeing the world. And I started counting the countries. And then it got a little bit difficult. Do you count the Vatican, Monte Carlo, Vatican, world's smallest country, Monte Carlo, principality? And then I said, I've been to Palestine, been to Israel, been to Morocco, Western Sahara. Palestine is occupied, Western Sahara is occupied by Morocco. Do I count those countries? I didn't count the overseas dependencies like the Canary Islands, the Azores or Easter Island. Easter Island belongs to Chile and you travel hundreds and hundreds of miles, you're not in a new country. And coming to Tibet reminds me of the tacit snob value of visiting countries. If you live in England, for example, France, you might not even get a point for going to France. And snob value, I think, is built around how close the country is to your own country. Is it expensive to buy the visa? Do the authorities make it difficult? Is it a remote part of the world? Is it a very poor, desolate part of the world? Or is it a war zone? They all add to the snob value of a country. And I am counting occupied territories as a country. And Tibet was <coughs> occupied. The Chinese had a very close relationship with Tibet over the centuries. Tibet somewhat depended upon its powerful neighbor, China. And when China saw there was a lot of strife within the Buddhist community in the 1940s, on the 7th of October 1950, 4,000 Chinese troops, I'm sorry, I am should say 40,000 Chinese troops attacked Tibet from four, from six different directions and the ill-equipped 4,000 Tibetan soldiers were no match and the Chinese took over Tibet and they forced the Tibetans to sign an agreement that Tibet will become part of China and they had to sign upon the dotted line and China is now occupying Tibet as far as I would say forever because the whole world wants to trade with China. China is going to be the largest economy in the world alongside the United States of America. Chinese are building roads all over the developing countries. So the world is going to depend upon China and China is going to do largely what it wants to do within reason. And China is here to stay. It's brought new tunnels, new roads, it's brought massive in infrastructure such as the railway line and it's also brought schools and hospitals and if you want to know more about the history of Tibet and how it has become part of China how about doing what I'm going to do I'm going to buy the blu-ray of Brad Pitt's film seven years in Tibet I look forward to showing you the next installment of these live one takes on Turner's Travels. This is part four. We're coming from Tibet. I'm thrilled to be here. It's a desire that I've had for decades to get here. And behind us is the iconic, the unique Dalai Lama Palace. Seven Dalai Lamas have lived here in this palace which was built in the seventh century. We're at ten and a half thousand feet. I've only been here about 19 hours and it's literally a breathtaking experience going up there to have a visit. And I'll sign off from this part of part four in Tibet of Turner's Travels by saying you must come here. It is a definite must on your bucket list. Thank you for tuning in.